Hi. Um, I'm back. <laughs> well, really, I'm doing a second video today. Um, and it's not going to be today, it's going to be Wednesday. But uh, I'm doing this in collaboration with the Swirl World. Man, I the lovely, um, a very lovely person and a uh, friend of mine. And she's, uh, you know, um, she's awesome and um, just very positive. And um, Shell Matthews Calibre. Um, she runs the Swirl World, and, and it's a blog, and it's also a, a Facebook page uh, that I, I frequent, and it is very positive. It is a really positive um, about uh, black women uh, swirling and everything, a uh, positive look and spin and, and hopeful, and, and that's why I like it because it's, it's positive, um, you know, and stuff. And um, although, you know, I've got lots of warnings and lots of stuff that I like to tell people, I also want people to be positive about love and what, you know, what finding the right love and uh, the right person for you can mean to your life. And today I'm going to be talking about um, know the difference or, you know, or that there is a difference. And there's a difference. Um, and we're talking, um, I decided to collaborate with her on this because we were talking about uh, her um, with uh, also one of her um, her um, uh, one of the persons that monitors her, her wife, um, Adrian London Leach. Um, hi guys and stuff um, about um, self sabotage and vetting and how many black women when they date get those two a little crossed up and mixed up what is self-sabotage and what is betting they're not the same thing and i think some people think they might be the same thing um uh even though they don't really sound like the same thing i think they're doing self-sabotage and think that they're betting that's what they think they're doing um and saying they don't use it as self-sabotage but i think they're doing self-sabotage and they're actually um think that they're vetting and they're really hurting chances um, for meeting men and this just came from you know sort of sort of you know things I've, I've seen and I'm sure they've seen you know and stuff and having such a positive um, website and such a positive Facebook page about swirling you can get a lot of negative Nellies and you know a lot of negative um, black women who are always got something bad to say or or always talking about their bad experience, or always talking about how, you know, um, you know, oh, it's just not going to work out for me, and oh, I just can't find anybody, and sort of, you know, that, you know, you can always get the negative people, and it can sometimes um, end up, you know, rubbing off on people who have positive looks at what it means to be you know, what it means to be swirling out here in the world, you know, hey, swirling, dating, marrying people and all that good stuff, you know, and um, so I'm going to talk about those two things. Now, I've talked about self-sabotage before um, because I was a practicer of self-sabotage, um, not going to lie, um, and really part of self-sabotage is, is there's a lot of things that go with it, but the biggest thing that goes with people self-sabotaging themselves and I'm not talking about vetting is fear the fear that something is going to go wrong the fear that I don't I'm getting this but I really don't deserve it you know um, just the fear that this just can't work out this, there's just no way for this to work out and stuff. And so the thing about self-sabotage and sort of letting and sort of us letting self-sabotage creep in is that it's an easy out. If I sort of figure out stuff to do to get rid of you, that way I can save myself some hurt. I can save myself some drama. Um, if I put you through your paces, make somebody jump through hoops of fire who has already really proven themselves and I'm steady demanding more and more after a while it, it, it's a it's a little bit much and so the thing is well you're sitting back and you're thinking well 
I don't really think I deserve this person or this relationship. Or, of course, this just can't work out and this is just going to be really terrible and stuff. And so when you start doing self-sabotage, then you end up, if you push the person away, then you can always say, you know, I'm, I was just right. I, I, I knew that this was going to happen. I was just right. And the thing is, we as people have a tendency to want to prove ourselves right. We do not have a tendency to want to prove ourselves wrong. We want to prove ourselves right. So in the thinking that we're vetting someone, you know, because vetting, vetting, vetting should never move out in fear. Vetting should move out in hope in that, you know, I'm vetting this person because I'd like to find some more out about them. And I'd like to find out if they'd be a really good partner for me and stuff. I'm deserving of a good partner. Now that I don't think I'll get one, I'm deserving of a good partner. And so I'm since I'm deserving of a good partner, then, well, we'll have to see what happens with this person. I'll have to ask questions. I'll have to ask, you know, I'll have to watch what it is that they do, do the words that they say, match up with their actions and all that stuff. I have to watch the way they treat people and stuff like that. I have to see the way they treat me, how they react to situations and stuff like that, what they say about their past, what they don't say and stuff. And so all of this is in the hope that this person is will be deserving of you not in fear that they won't now the fear that they won't is really just on you because you think you don't deserve someone like that now I was talking about on the squirrel world about how you know one of the things I knew and how I knew I, I had fallen deeply in love and madly in love with my husband was because of after all the sort of self-sabotage that I did to that relationship sort of early on he didn't go anywhere he didn't go anywhere he stuck in he didn't really you know he wasn't really perturbed by it it didn't really he just sort of he just you know he would prove himself and prove himself and there was a point um maybe around maybe two or three months into the relationship that I just sort of had an aha moment and said, you know what, I can screw this up. I can self-sabotage myself and I can screw this up. And I can do all this and this dude will go and just find somebody else. You know, it's, it's not like I'm the best person ever in the world. And so, you know, so, and I thought, do I really want to do that? Um, do I want to risk losing him? over my drama. Now, I'm going to tell you how the self-sabotage sort of instinct came about with me. I am a, I was divorced um, previously. I had, I was married previously and had a really hard, rocky marriage with an emotionally abusive husband who had narcissistic personality disorder and stuff. So it was tough. And at the end, it was really tough, and I barely made it out, you know, with, with, you know, any semblance of, of self-esteem and stuff after having gone through what I went through with him, having been with him almost 13 years and stuff, and we'd been married almost nine. And so when I came out, there was part of me that didn't trust my own decision-making skills, but there was also a part of me that was in fear of thinking that every other relationship I had would be the way the one I had with him was. That that was kind of destined for me and that was great. And that was very scary. Um, I wanted to meet someone and I wanted to have a relationship with somebody. But I just was so freaked out at the thought that, oh my God, it's just going to be just like that. That, you know, I, I would sabotage many things. I would sabotage many things and stuff. And, um, I was doing that because of my own fear and the sort of, you know, trying to figure out how to get some self-esteem back and love myself some more, you know, and stuff, and know that I was worthy of something good. Now, that had to come via me going to therapy. But you still, although you go to therapy, there still may be parts you're not rid of. You're still working. You're still, it takes some time. You're still working through some of the things that had happened. And there were some things that I didn't even really know had happened to me until 
a little bit in the therapy and then I was like what that was happening and stuff so there's a lot of surprises in there and stuff so I, there was some stuff I had no idea had happened so it was a tough time to try to you know build up self-esteem okay I meet this nice person and stuff you know I built build up self-esteem was feeling better but there was still something in me in the back of me that just kept saying this is just too good to be true that's, that's what I was thinking. This is just too good to be true. Okay, this just cannot be happening. You know, this is a really great guy. What does he want with me? That was my thought. What does he want with me? And so then I said, well, maybe I'll throw him a couple of loops and I'll see how good he really is and stuff. And so I threw him some loops. And I threw him a loop and loop and he would just, he didn't change nothing. He didn't do anything. Nothing changed about him. And stuff. And so, yeah, that day when I finally had the aha moment, I was like, okay, you're being an idiot. You're being an absolute idiot. This guy is really great. He really loves you. You know, he's got affection for you. He he's he's compassionate. He he's a nice guy. You you what's wrong with you? But what I thought I was doing with him was vetting him by doing all these really ridiculous jump through hoops of fire tests and stuff and all this stuff. I really thought I was, I thought maybe I was vetting him. That's what I thought I was doing and stuff. And so it was sort of this twisted thing. I think that I'm, oh, I'm vetting him. And, you know, and, and of course, when he proved, when he proved to me that he was just not, you know, good, then I would go, oh, well, he just really wasn't worthy of me. But it really wasn't him. It was me. Fearing that I didn't deserve what it was that he was offering and stuff. Now, the first thing I can say about people being self-sabotaged people and, and getting over self-sabotage for, or for anything is that you have to admit you're a self-sabotager. You have to admit that you do it. Um, and that means being introspective. Mm, uh, most people don't like to be introspective. Most people don't like to look within themselves and and to the deep, dark parts of themselves and see what's really wrong with them to try to fix it, to try to repair it, to try to move beyond that, you know, and stuff. And so many people who are self-sabotagers will tell you the exact same thing that I just told you, is that they are, oh, well, he really didn't deserve me, and they, and you know, and stuff. And, you know, I know... Some of you may have girlfriends or people that you know, and they botched up relationships with people, and you're you're thinking, "Wow, that person was really nice. What the? What is wrong with you? You know, I, I know people like that, and stuff. So, but really, those people aren't. You know, it's not that. They, it's just that some people are self sabotage. That's what they do. That's what they know to do because they really don't think that they deserve the love. Now, let me just be truthful, okay? We're all not wonderful people. I'm not. I'm not some wonderful person. I'm not the best person in the whole wide world and all this stuff. And although you know, I, I'm a I'm a nice person and everything, and a good person and a kind person. And I think of myself as you know pretty good, pretty decent and stuff. I'm not the be all end all of all time, okay and stuff. And none of us are. And one of the things you have to remember while you're doing self-sabotage, while you're trying to make this person jump through hoops of fire and jump over tall buildings and race around the world and do all this craziness for you so they can prove their feelings, is that really, what is there about you? What is there about you that makes somebody, that would make somebody Put up with your crap. Now think about it. Because that's one of the things that we don't want to think about. We all think that people should somehow put up with all of our lunacy and our craziness and stuff. And you should just love me for me. No, 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 no. Okay? That's not how relationships work. That's not how love works. You should love me for who I... Yeah, it... it no. There's some stuff that... I had to change. There was stuff that I had to do. There were compromises that I had to make. Not anything that was deeply morally compromising, but there was stuff that I had to do to change. I could not go into this relationship and somehow when say, oh, well, just take me, you know, and just, you know, although I'm totally screwed up and everything. Yeah, just take it, dude, you know, and just suffer with it. 
No, that's not fair to anybody. That's not fair to anybody. And in a relationship, you have to work and you have to grow and you have to change. That's part of being in a relationship. If you are a self-sabotager, if you think about all your relationships that you've gone back on years and years, and you think about some people that were some really nice people that you just mucked it up for the sake of mucking it up so you could save yourself what you thought would be impending heartache and disaster so you can break up with them before they broke up with you and stuff, you might be a self-sabotager. You're not vetting. You're sabotaging yourself. As black women, I don't know what it is, and I, one of my readers has said it, and I used that in another blog, and I say it again. For some reason, we just don't think we deserve much of anything, and we just have a hard time, you know. And I had a hard time when I first met my, my now husband. I had a hard time accepting stuff from him. I had the hardest time ever. Because I had been in a marriage with somebody who didn't give, and I mean, he didn't give not none, you know, I mean, not, you know, not none, not even a a, a, a little bit, okay? So I'd been in this relationship with someone who wasn't a giver and stuff, and so my thought, excuse me while I put my earring back in, but my thought was that you know somebody given to me because with him giving always meant I had to do something in return that there was some kind of cost I had to pay in the end you know that it would either be brought up and uh, against me or um, you know he he wanted something from me I just I there was nothing about him I could trust you know, and stuff, everything with him was, well, you know, if I give you something, I have to get back. There was never any sort of unconditional thing. So when my now husband, when I was dating him and he would give and do stuff with me, I would always be slightly suspicious of him, you know, and stuff. I mean, you really can't, all you know is what you know from your past and stuff. And so as a, as even though you're trying to get over it and you're trying to make your way through it, you still have that past part of you and all you know is your past, and so it still creeps up. So it wasn't even anything I would do consciously. He would just do stuff, and then I'd be like, hmm, I wonder what he did that for. But then it wasn't really for anything. He just did it because, you know, he liked me, wanted to be nice and stuff. You know, and so my own, self, my own tendency to self-sabotage was sabotaging the relationship. Because if someone's giving you a gift, all they really want is a thank you. If you can't really be appreciative of the gift, if you can't re be appreciative of what it is that they do, why would they want to date you? I mean, I wouldn't want to date anybody that wasn't appreciative of what I did, you know, and stuff. I, ne I don't need you to jump. I don't need you to jump up and down. I don't need you to go and put it on a billboard and, and say, but I can't get any gratitude for, you know, yeah, thanks. Thanks for doing that. I, I really appreciate you doing that. That was very nice and stuff, you know. But when you're a self-sabotager, everything is going to be drama or potential drama. Um, everything is something that you have to be readily suspicious of. And although I'm a suspicious person, that's just by nature, I'm a suspicious person. At some point, I had to figure out, well, when was my suspicion, you know, when was it okay when was it you know when was and when was it just me sort of going left you know and, and stuff you know and you have to be honest I just I can't tell you enough that it, to get out of the out of the circle or out of the kind of pathology of being a self-sabotager is you have to be honest about what it is that you're doing you have to be honest about what it is which way it is that you're going, you know, you have to be honest about what you maybe feel about this person and stuff, you know, and I'm telling you, you can't vet and self-sabotage, it doesn't work like that, you know, and stuff, you you, you can't do both, you know, and stuff, um, self-sabotage will work, you trust and believe it, it works, I mean, you will sabotage yourself out of relate, millions of relationships, with these sort of bad attitudes, with these sort of, oh, woe is me thing, you know, um, the sort of pity party, um, the martyrdom, 
the, you know, the control issues, all the rest of the stuff that we use when we really don't really know how to say what it is that we need, you know, and stuff. And so we use a bunch of other stuff, passive aggressiveness, straight up aggressiveness, you know, and stuff. Um, it works. Your self-sabotage will work and you will find yourself without someone. You know, and uh, I'm just particularly saying this to black women, but I could say this to anybody. Anybody could use this. I'm sure there are lots of different self-sabotagers out there and you know who you are and stuff. Um, it's uh, it's something that sort of has to stop. And I'm going to give you links to two of the articles I wrote about. One was about stopping self-sabotage and the other one was about being vulnerable, which is the self-sabotagers kryptonite, you know, vulnerability. And, and and I'm going to tell you something that I heard from the matchmaker, Paul Carrick Brunson, who is a wonderful matchmaker and stuff. You cannot be in a relationship with someone and not be vulnerable. So if you're not ready to be vulnerable, forget it. You're not going to be you're not going to be in a relationship with anyone and not be vulnerable. It don't work like that. You have to you have to open yourself up. And take the risk of being vulnerable to to find a deep, loving, committed relationship. If you cannot be vulnerable, you will not be in a relationship. Or if you are, it'll be a really dysfunctional one. So you you can't do that sort of self protection all the time, you know, and stuff. You have to be vulnerable. And so I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna um. I'm gonna put that one also in. A link to that one. And a link to the one about, you know, stop self-sabotaging because it's, it's not worth it. You know, um, you're, you know, black women who are, who have been, and I know many black women have been dogs. You know, you ain't got to tell me the story. I don't need it. I, I know the story. I've heard the story of, of, of heartbreak. As bad as mine is, I've heard stories ten times worse. And not just from one person, from a couple people, you know, that people have been, I know, I know. You know, and I know how hard it is to let yourself get out there and do this again. But either you're going to do it or just if you're going to whine and cry and be just go sit in a corner somewhere and leave the rest of us alone. OK, you know, I mean, for real, you know, just go somewhere, you know, and stuff, because either you're going to go for your own happiness, you know, and what it is that you'd like for your life, or either you're not. There's kind of no in-between, you know. And so if you're going to do it, if you're going to go forth and go for your own happiness, then you're going to need to stop self-sabotaging. Really vet. If you're going to vet, which is not coming from a place of fear, it's coming from a place of hopeful. Vet if you're going to really vet and be know that you're going to have to be vulnerable, whether you like it or not. But I'm telling you, if you vet correctly and you find the right person and that person comes into your life, you won't regret being vulnerable. It'll be a wonderful thing. It'll open you up to something wonderful and deep and meaningful in that relationship. There is nothing like vulnerability. And trust and believe, I was a person that was not wanting to be vulnerable myself. But when I finally did it, it was wonderful. When I opened up and finally let this person love me, wow, it was like, wow, what have I been doing? This is awesome. You know, you don't have to be fearful. And the thing about fearful and fearful of bad things happening and all this stuff is because I think sometimes we invest so much in what it is that we do. We become obsessed and needy and stuff, which is also not healthy. That's pre and those people should just stay out of relationships, period, because you're, co you're codependent and stuff. So if you're that sort of person, you need to be getting help for that before you move into some sort of relationship, you know. Because it should be okay if somebody decides to, hey, you know, I think I might leave or this maybe isn't working out for me. You should be okay. Your whole world should not fall down, you know. And if you're thinking your whole world is going to fall down because some dude you've known for a month or two 
is thinking about leaving, yeah, you got other issues that re- they don't have nothing to do with self sabotage or nothing. They have to do with maybe you're a little bit codependent and you may need to get some help for that, you know, and stuff. Because, you know, it shouldn't be this thing of, oh, woe is me, whatever, what am I going to do if, you know, you know, Tommy decides after a week he don't want to date me no more, you know, and stuff. And I've heard women two or three dates and they're devastated. You know, I mean, they're devastated when this guy's like, well, you know, I'm thinking, I mean, they're devastated. And that is a sign of codependency, you know, and stuff. And believe me, codependency is a, for for most people, it is a huge turnoff. It is a huge turnoff. It is scary. And usually if you're a codependent, you end up finding someone who is probably going to abuse you in some way because, you know, abuse is love codependent and stuff. So if that's something that you're having to deal with, you, you need to go ahead and deal with that in a way that you need to deal with it before you start, you know, even dating. That's just sort of an aside. But for those of you who are self-sabotaging, I want to just challenge you to... Think. I'm not here to solve everybody's problem. I'm not here to make stuff better. I'm not here to tell you what do you can do anything you want to do. It's your life. It's not my life. I'm happily married and about to have a baby. You know, if your life doesn't work out, not going to hurt me, you know. Um, so, you know, but I want to challenge those who are want to or know that they are or think that they are to really think about what it is that they're doing and thinking when they go into relationships. That may be self-sabotage and not vetting someone, you know, and I've got a couple of uh, blogs about vetting and stuff. That's different, you know, and stuff, but that may be self-sabotage and challenge yourself to stop doing those things and stop being in fear and stop thinking that you don't deserve love and happiness and a joyous, good relationship. You do. You do. You do. You know? Um, you do. So that's sort of my it for today. Um, I certainly, if people have got questions, um, you can certainly ask me questions down at the bottom, and I'll, I'll try and I'll try my best to answer them. I am not a relationship therapist. I am just a person who has lived life, okay, and stuff, and learned some lessons. And uh, so, you know, so if you think you need therapy or a therapist, I certainly would recommend that you go get one. Um, and, you know, and, and go get somebody and, and get the help that you need. Um, so I, I hope to see you all again next week. Um, and I don't know what I'll be talking about then, um, but hopefully something positive and, and bringing forth, you know, hey, you know, for people to go for, that's kind of that's kind of the thing, that's kind of the thing I'm, I'm hoping now, for people to go for for people to move forward, to, to let go of the past and, and you know, and, and all that sort of stuff that's been dragging you back, you know, and, and keeping you stuck and to move forward. Um, you know, there's a lot of life out there. You're not dead. You're, you're still alive. You still have stuff to do. So, um, you know, go for it. Live it. It's waiting for you. Um, so I'll talk to you all then. Uh, and uh, see ya. And uh, have a nice week. And... Weekend. Okay. Bye-bye.